Show to Cameron Jenner. The NFL season starts tonight. KC in Baltimore. Eagles tomorrow night. Jason Kelsey with us here in studio, as he will be every single Thursday from 7.30 to 8.30. So, Jason, let's get into this game. Now, yeah. we bang. are... Bang! That makes me feel like going bang, like you go... Bang! bang. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's really <laughs> dumb, man. That's why Jason <laughs> Kelsey... That's why you do In studio... <laughs> That is damn impressive. <laughs> that is damn impressive. By the way, Jason. Me. All right, I'm going to push the game aside for a second. It's as tempting as that is. <laughs> so you have listened to the show for a number of years. You ever get your head checked for why you listen to us? I mean, oh, what, what, what drew you to us? I, I well, I think, like I said, I'm an early riser. So when I'm coming into the facility, this is the show that, quite frankly, is just on. Uh oh, is that oh, John? That's bad no news. You guys, in the matter. You guys, Seltzer, Sirian, he's hurt all season. This is oh, tough, man. You guys, Uh-oh. You, guys, Uh-oh. you guys, you guys were on the. Uh, and sometimes I don't have a choice because I'm in the uh, car with Kai when I don't want to listen to it because she likes listening. So, oh, but I think wow. um, I also he loved Angela. We never understood that. You, I still love Angela. Yeah. He's a character. I, I, but you guys are also on the mid show for a lot of sure my were. career, and um, in the off yeah. season, that's when I would be getting out of the facilities a lot. Oh. Or lifting and stuff like that. So wow. usually it's just you, your guys' show is on the most. <laughs> oh, no. So I'm listening so to it. So happenstance is the answer. Hold on. Did, ben, <laughs> great. Did, Chris, did Ben Simmons listen to us? I hope not. Me, I, me I, too, Jason. <laughs> I went to it, buddy. Here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the one I really want to know. I want to oh, know man. if Carson stinks. I want to oh, know. No. I, I, I oh, no. know. I want to know if Carson Wentz is horrible. I want to know if he listened to it. All right, all right, all right. So I he's also in KC he this year. He could mess. I mean, listen. Yeah. Andy Reid is a quarterback whisperer. Um, Can you, you know, imagine? Hopefully he doesn't play because that means Patrick Mahomes is healthy. But if he does, I would not be surprised if you see a really good quarterback in Carson Wentz. Isn't that where you imagine Nick that? Foles he could fold yes. back on he track? Could fold. Look at any quarterback that's played for Andy Reid. Yes. Dating back to here, they all play well. If there's one guy that knows how to make quarterbacks play well in this league, Carson it's... Wentz could get out there and actually take what – the yeah. defense allows, like he could go out there and read through it and take. Yeah, the, I mean that's like, a big effort, John, because yeah. he he just didn't do that. The for check such down, a good the, the easy stuff, the yeah. gimme stuff. Yeah, well, moving the team down the field, matriculating us all the way all right. to a world championship. Uh, Carson Wentz, all right, all right could so, do that. So Jason, as, as tempting hopefully as, it's Pat. It looks <laughs> like the best. I, as, be a fun game as tempting it is to talk about yeah. Carson, and we'll have a lot of time over the whole season to get into. I mean, there's sure. you know, we got a million different topics to cover, but let's let's drill down on tomorrow night. So before we even get to the game, let's get to the Brazil element of it. So the yeah. Bra- the Brazil thing. I mean, I said this yesterday on the show. Um, like, I'd love to go to Brazil if I was vacationing in Brazil. Sure. I wouldn't want WIP to send me to Brazil to work. <laughs> I'd be like, well, I'd rather work in Philadelphia. So yeah. How do you think that thing factors into this game? Uh, well, it's an experience n- and just and the mood. It's it's a neutral site, so I don't think it's going to factor in that much. I think that it's going to factor, but I don't think that there's like an advantage for either team. Um, I think that uh, I always loved playing the international games. I don't know why. I, maybe it's just because I got tired of the monotony of like what every single other game is, but. Um, I loved when we played uh, in London, and I loved going to my brother's games when he played in London, and uh, it was it was always just a fun experience. This one, I don't know. I mean, you, I, there's been a lot of sound bites out. They have the the wildfires happening right now. There's a lot of protesting happening in the country right now. So, like, I, how much are they actually going to get to experience Brazil? Probably yeah. minimal. Would you want it week one? Like, here, here's my thing as a fan. Yeah, I loved when the Phillies played in in London. Yeah. In June. I also know I would not have wanted them to play in London opening day. It, this yeah. one just feels weird to me on, on the beginning of the season. Well, and what's also unique about this, and they're kind of, I think they probably scheduled it this way, but Eagles are on the Monday after this game. And typically in an international game, yeah. they always tie it up with your bye week being the next week because they know it's such an intense travel to make that happen. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they rebound the following week from having to make this this type of move. I mean, it's totally. a nine-hour flight there, nine-hour flight back. It's a uh, it's it's a grueling uh, travel experience. Yeah, let, right, let's get to like the game huh. itself. So, look, we, we know all about the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the Green Bay Packers and the challenge tomorrow night. Now, it always gets a little screwy at this time of year in particular because, you know, <laughs> John, we know, we cover this every year. 
Like all these teams, six teams in the past, seven teams now make the playoffs. And, oh, these seven teams are aligned for the playoffs. It's like, no, like half of them are going to make it. Half of them are going to miss it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a third of the roster gets turned over every year. So who really knows other than like Kansas City, what anyone's got? Sure. But, but like, Jason, what do you think the Packers got? What kind of challenges tomorrow night? Well, they ended they ended this, uh, this last year really, really hot and clicking. I mean, I think everybody saw the Dallas Cowboy playoff game in – uh, that's what this offense can be. I mean, Jordan Love is a really good young quarterback mixed in with this offense that is very run and play action friendly. I mean, listen, Jordan Love played great, but he's also, I mean, there's that Dallas game, there are people wide open. I mean, it was honestly a masterful scheming game, I thought. From, it was remarkable. Yeah. And um, I don't see Dan Quinn kind of get like the better. And I don't know if there's players messing up there, but it was, it was an impressive performance from a coaching standpoint, I thought. What Green Bay did. You know what it also was? Psychological warfare. <laughs> you know why? Why is that? Coin flip. I win the oh, coin flip. Receive. Give me the ball. Yeah. I might not rare. normally do it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna psychologically spook the fifty three players or yeah. forty whatever dress, forty six, forty seven. I'm gonna spook the coaching staff. I'm gonna spook the Dallas hundred thousand fans. And it did. I'm gonna scare everybody five five minutes into the game and it did. Mm-hmm. And it on the road. I mean, it took the wind out of that stadium 100%. so fast. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, I think that I think they're a very good team. I think I always hated as a player playing against a coordinator or a new play caller, like especially the first game, but even more importantly, early in the year, because you know I don't. I've listened. Uh, what is it, Halfley or Halfley? Do you know? The I name? believe it's Halfley. Uh, Halfley, not 100%, okay. But. So, so Joe Halfley. I've looked into like his background, and I know that the Eagles have probably done a lot more research than I have. But I mean, he's been all over the place. And you know, what do you ex- usually when you're going into these things and say, okay, this guy comes from this tree, so I'm expecting this, this, and this, and these are the blitzes those guys like to run, and you kind of have a good, um, you know, bank of like what to expect. I, I really don't know what to expect with this. He uh, used the word like. Fearless or something when, when good he word was asked use. what <laughs> what he wanted his defenses to look like. Yeah, yeah, it sounded to me like whatever adjective he used, he sounded like he was going to send be aggressive. someone. He yeah, sent yeah. some dogs. And, but it's interesting because I think that you know he was in San Fran with um uh oh my gosh uh, Jets Salah Salah yeah. thank you and um they they I wouldn't say that they're like a big blitzing mm. like tree but then he's also been in college where he probably has blitzed a lot more so. Regardless, they're going to blitz the Eagles. Yeah. I think that's going to happen, and the Eagles sh- know that. Um, but I think uh, it's that was always something I hated. Um, but we also kind of have that advantage, too. Obviously, Kellen Moore, even though he's called plays, this is a new system, and there's always new influences that happen when you're in a new uh, building with new uh, position coaches and other people having re- reference. And yeah. Vic Fangio, like, I mean, and his defense is multiple by nature. He's a guy that really calls defense to the strength of – the pieces he has. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how the whole thing unfolds, honestly. All right, let's we get hear, one. Hold on. We hear yeah. we hear all the time about how uh, it's going to be different with Kellen Moore. Uh, not so much shotgun as what we yeah. were in the past. We hear how that makes a huge difference, gives you access to a lot more runs in the run game. How much of a difference does that really make? The under center Jalen Hurts versus shotgun Jalen Hurts. I think it all works as long as it is conducive and it all flows together and it's a well thought out thing. I think the under center thing has been proved for longer in the NFL to be a model that works at a high level. And, you know, Kyle Shanahan and all these outside zone boot, Mm -hmm. like everything marries up really well. But I also think that you can keep defenses on their toes and do things out of shotgun. I'm not one of these guys that's like, has to be under center and has to look like this. Um, I think it all works. I think that Kellen Moore has done a lot of the under center stuff. I think I think if you're going to run outside zone, I prefer under center. If you're going to do some other things, you can do it out of gun, and you can be creative in whatever you do and make it look similar. But um, the backers have to respect under center more because the play hits faster and they have to run downhill to really stop the run, and that opens up a lot of the play action stuff behind it. Um, I'm excited for Dallas Goddard if they do get to that. I mean, uh, Dallas is a great tight end that, I mean, I know he's overshadowed with the two receivers that we have out wide, but he's a guy that can block and do a lot of things. And, you know, we've seen guys in the system where you're doing a lot of that run and play action, all of a sudden the tight end's numbers jump. 
Yeah. So I, maybe he has a great year. I'm hoping he does. Yeah. All right, he Jay- is an incredible he's, tight end. He's great. All right, Jason with us here, as, as he will be every uh, every Thursday, 7.30 to 8.30. So, Jason, final thing as we go into this. is like So it's just like a soccer game. Don't they have extra time for like three minutes? They do, yes. And I'm still can feel like, when does the game end? All of a sudden, someone just blows the whistle? Yeah, the whistle. Yeah. Like the yeah, clock it's not is that going confusing. At, at no, it is very confusing. No, well, the officials have the clock. We don't really it's know. Is well, the then point. show me on the screen how much time I got left. Well, they don't like to do that. It's a secret, Well, that's why Joe. I said it's confusing. It, it, right. it adds, right. it, it adds Jason, irony. Jason knows mystery. I'm right. He knows I'm right. Yes. Jason, here, here's the <laughs> it's fun. Oh, you can see it on his face right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, final, final thing here. Um, tomorrow night, what is this, 8.30 tomorrow, 8.15? 8.30, I believe. All right. All right, 8.25. They are about to play a game in five minutes, and you are not the they on the field. Tomorrow night, five minutes before kickoff, what do you think you will be feeling? Oh, man, I don't know. I'll tell you next week. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think it'll be a mixed bag. I think it'll be excitement for to see what's about to unfold uh, and to watch those guys go out there and perform. And, you know, the first game is so big. You've spent all off season on it, and you, and you realize you know, what it feels like to go out there and finally play a regular season game, and that's a big moment for those guys. Um what I feel, I mean, I'll, I'll probably miss not being out there. I'll, I'll and to some extent, I'll probably be excited to be able to watch it and take it in as a fan on another level. So there'll probably be a mixed bag there. Makes sense. Yeah. Jason, uh, again, congratulations on the career. Thanks so much for your decision. I want to be part of our show in the station. We're all obviously thrilled. It should be a heck of a year. I mean, whether they're truly great or not, they should at the very least probably be pretty darn good. Should yeah. be a very compelling season. Yep. Should John should be a postseason season? You know, I'll be surprised, frankly, if it's not, and that would be a disaster. And I don't think that's going to happen. Jason, we'll rock and roll the whole year with you, and uh, and thanks, buddy. Thanks awesome. for doing this. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, there Thank he is, Jason it. Kelsey. Every single uh, Thursday from uh, seven thirty to eight thirty.